Das ist ein Teil Wort. One time as a favor to a young princess, wrote an adventure tale. And the princess liked the tale so much that she asked for more installments. And originally he had planned to end it after a couple of adventures, but she wasn't willing to have it end. She kept asking for more. And so the tale went on and on and on. And instead of having a nice narrative arc, it started to sprawl. And if I remember right, the only reason it ended was because the princess died. When you read the poem, it's, it's not like a regular story. It's more like life. It's just one thing after another keeps on going and going and going. And if the, person, if the princess hadn't died, so soon probably would have kept on going. That's the way life is. It doesn't have a nice arc. It doesn't have a nice series of closures. The human mind just keeps going on, as long as there's craving and clinging. Even when this body ends, craving and clinging can create a bridge to a new body and a new life. When major events happen in our life, many times we look for closure, and the world just doesn't have it to offer. The only place we can find closure is inside. If someone passes away, we do want to honor that person. At the very least, make a statement of the goodness that that person had, because we don't like to see it disappear. And we don't want to have it go unstated. And that's an honorable thing. But we have to realize that things don't stop there. Our lives have to go on. The other person's life is going on someplace else. We have no idea where. And this is why the Buddha said, there is no closure. Until you can find a way, as in the sutta we just chanted now, through lack of clinging, released. It's the clinging and craving that keeps us going. And it's only through the practice that we can find refuge. It's only in the Dharma that all boats can find harbor and all hearts can find rest. Otherwise, there's that impetus in the mind, and impetus in the heart that just keeps going looking for what's next, what's next, what's next. Then we plow our ways through one life. It's not enough. We keep on going for another one, and another one, and another one. As the Buddha said, it's very hard to meet someone who has not been your mother or your father or your sister or your brother or your son or your daughter. In other words, our relationships have been shuffled around so much that it's overwhelming. And it's interesting, the Buddha never used that as a discussion of how we should love everybody because they'd been our mother at some point. He said more, it's more a reflection that gives rise to a sense of terror. That's the word sangwega. It just keeps going on like this, and there's so much of it. It also gives rise to a desire for release. This is why we come to the practices, realizing that this is the only place where we're going to find any refuge. We talk about taking the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha as our refuge, but we do that in the sense of taking their lives, taking the life of the Buddha, the life of the members of the Noble Sangha, taking their lives as our example taking the Dharma as our guidance, so we can give rise to their qualities within the heart, 
within our own lives. Those qualities are what provide the refuge. So right now you want to drop all your other thoughts. Come to find rest right here. The breath coming in, the breath going out. Even though they're still clinging and craving in the process of staying with the breath, it's the kind of clinging and craving that lead you out. Because we create a sense of concentration, a sense of being settled and established here. That is a state of becoming. And as that word becoming indicates, it doesn't stop. It's a process. It keeps going. But it's this kind of becoming where you can look into your mind and see, well, where is that arrow that keeps us from really settling down? There's a very poignant passage in the canon where the Buddha said prior to, that prior to his awakening, he looked at life and he saw it. It was a puddle of water where the water was drying up, drying up, and it was filled with fish fighting one another for the water. And all I could feel was sangwega. But then he said, well, where was the source of this problem? And it wasn't that we should have more water. It was that there was this arrow in the heart, the arrow that keeps pointing forward, pointing forward, and stabbing us at the same time. That's what we've got to pull out. And as he said, that's what he pulled out with his awakening. And so but the first thing you've got to do when you pull out an arrow is you've got to relax around the arrow, because the more you fight and tense up around it, the more damage it does, the more it pains you. So this is why we get the mind in a state of concentration. It's like re relaxing around an arrow so as to minimize the pain in the mind and make it easier for us to pull it out. So even though concentration is not the ultimate ease and it's not the ultimate happiness, it still gives us a, a period of rest. and the ability to gather our strength to deal with all the things that keep coming at us. So take rest right here. Learn to cultivate a sense of well-being even around this arrow that's stabbing your heart, the arrow of clinging, craving. and all the specific clingings and cravings we have right now. Try not to shoot yourself with extra arrows and learn how to relax around the arrow that's there. So we can learn how to recognize it for what it is. When you recognize it, then it's a lot easier to pull it out. Not grab it as your own. Not grab it as an essential feature in your heart. So learn to find whatever potential there is for ease in the moment, respite in the moment, and cultivate that. That's our duty with regard to the path. It's not the case that when concentration comes, you just watch it come and watch it go and say, oh yes, we've learned something about impermanence or inconstancy. It's your refuge. You cultivate it. You find where that potential for stillness is. Then you apply appropriate attention. To cultivate and to appreciate that potential and make the most of it. Because even though it isn't your ultimate refuge, it is your resting spot along the way. We can rest, gain nourishment, renew your strength. So you can continue in the right direction. Otherwise, life is just a kind of wandering around, lost in the forest, 
wounded and lost in the forest. Whereas if you're on the path, there's a way out. And the arrow can be removed. <laughs> 